Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of an Unexpected Podcast. My name is Tim, and with me as always, we have Matt, Mick, Rainier, and Devin. On this week's episode, we're going to be going over our weekly list. We're then going to be moving over to the Kingdoms of Kaza Doom and the Kingdoms of Moria and review those. And finally, we're going to go over with a duel where you have chosen Devin as your champion from last week's episode, as well as going against the previous <laughs> episode's winner, Mick. So we're going to see who wins between those two. So we're going to start off with the list first. So Devin, I'm going to move over to you. So what is this week's list? All right. So this week's list is actually from Charles uh, Richard Lind. I'm sorry. It's actually a, a player from Vancouver, Canada. And um, he actually comes to Nova quite often. And so uh, he's given us a Moria and Mordor list to review. So let's go over into his comment. He says, hey, guys, always looking forward to the podcast every week. Uh, I've painted up a spider queen and wanted to build an all-around competitive list with her. So uh, this is basically, I guess, from his description. This is just from random scenarios. Uh, draws just like Nova. And because he mentioned Nova, we can take slightly into account the type of terrain that you see at Nova, which is usually fantastical dioramas. A lot more heavy terrain than what you would see at Articon or the Warhammer World GT. So we go into his list, and this is 800 points. He has Durberts as his leader, and then he's got nine goblins in his warband, kind of sparsed out with shield, spear, and bow. Then a cave troll uh, added in. Then he's got a ring wraith at 210-1 for might, will, fate. And then he has a four black Numenorians, three Moran and orcs with spear and shield, one orc with a spear, one orc with a banner. So he does have a banner in his list. Uh, Kardish, uh, then he's got... Once again, just kind of a mix of orcs here. He's got a couple trackers, though, in this one. He's got four trackers, so a little bit of bow fire. And then he's got Guritz. Um, so if you don't know, Guritz is the orc who uh, enhances your deployment rules, essentially adding plus or minus one to your, to your whim. And he's leading some Moranin orcs, uh, some more orcs to kind of round it out with shield and spear. And then he has a spider queen with a bat swarm, three fell wargs added in. So there's a little bit of cavalry, a little bit of uh, orc trackers for bow fire, a little bit of hitting power. I guess you could say cave troll. He's got some magic thrown in. This list has quite a lot. It seems like he wanted answers to all things. <laughs> and so um, 800 points, 50 models at 800 points, very healthy number, 12 might, and a three-way alliance still being yellow. So uh, we'll go ahead and leave this on the screen for now just to kind of digest it since it is quite a lot going on here. And um, I might take, I suppose, the first crack at just my initial thoughts on this. So we have 50 models. That's already a lot of models. Uh, so that, that's actually very healthy, especially considering that a lot of the army is defense four and five. So that's very good that he has that many. Um, and then as far as his heroes, while he doesn't have crazy amounts of hitting power, I think it's interesting that Fire he queen. has... Well, and, and I was going to get into that. He has a spider <laughs> queen and he has a cave troll. So I agree. Yes, the Spider Queen. Um, woefully, she has two attacks, not three, as I once thought at Rainier's tournament that he hosted once. But, but she still. <laughs> 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 so yeah, guys, he's two attacks on that one. But still, she hits extremely hard. Now she there's no Druz Hag. Devin, remember that too. She oh, what is she? Cast compel. She cannot cast compel. As and well. Devin, Devin, you can't mount her on a mummy. Like you did at the tournament. So jury still out on the Jury is still out on the <laughs> mummy mounting. I, as far as I'm concerned, it hasn't been FAQ'd about her being mounted on a mummy, but you know, me and Rainier disagree. If, so. if you put the attacker on there, you're good. <laughs> so, um, so I mean, overall, obviously, the idea behind this list is to overwhelm and swarm, and then. Obviously, with the swarm being so big, you actually really don't even need to throw your biggest hitters at the opponent's biggest hitters, which is often the role they function as. So I do like the fact that with this overwhelming numbers, you have the Spider Queen and obviously a Bat Swarm that supports her. And so if you want to take out big hitters, you can with that combo very easily. The three Fell Wargs are obviously like, you know, for Reconnoiter scenarios play, which I think is great. Um, so that, that's a good add, in my opinion. Um, and I know Mick... May have some comments on this, but the alliance into Moria just to seemingly, I suppose, get a cave troll. Um, and so I think that was a, a bit of an interesting choice. But I'm, I personally don't mind it. I'm actually surprised you didn't give him the hammer. I think for a minor five-point upgrade, you get plus one to wound. I personally think that's worth the cost. Um, but, you know, others may disagree here on the podcast. We'll see. 
Uh, but other than that, I, I do like the fact that you have a large Friday list. And before I think about uh, how I would change this list, how it might make it more competitive, I want to hear everyone else's thoughts. So, Mick, why don't you go into it? I, I know you had some comments on the list when we first saw it. Well, when I, uh, when I first read it, um, it looked interesting, but I just thought um, just allowing Moria just for the cave troll seems a bit weird when Mordor itself has a lot of really, really cool things like Felbys and, and Mordor trolls and Shelob as well. Um, I really like Derbos, uh, but I'm not, I'm not necessarily too big of a fan of having Derbos as your leader at 800 points when um, you'll be up against the likes of um, Boromir's, Aragorn's, Azog's, and, and, and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure about the leader's choice. At, at the same time, Spider Queen obviously cannot really be the, 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 the best leader choice ever. Um, and there are no other Valor models. So, uh, I would just be keen not to really go into Moria, personally. But... Uh, yeah, I guess I guess I guess I'll talk about the changes possibly after after the other comments from, from the other guys. Rainier. Yeah, uh, I I actually like the Moria Moria uh, add-on quite a lot. I think it it complements the list pretty well. Um, Durbert's as a leader, I don't. I think he he could have even allied in, and I'm thinking Rich Lynn because Rich Lynn's actually one of the best players in North America. He was table one last Nova, wasn't he? Yeah, Devin on the last He was, la doing, he was doing extremely well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. He he was like one turn away from winning Nova last last Nova. So, but I'd say I like the inclusion of Derbert. So Derbert's um, someone from our group plays him a lot and makes him the leader. And what a lot of people forget is Derbert has three might and heroic defense. So he's very hard to kill. Um, the, and you bring him with the cave troll and the spider queen. You can, if a Bormir's into Durberts, you can just hurl heroic defense or hurl something into Durbert to knock Bormir down. And I think that's what the whole synergy with the cave troll ad is too. Like we talked, I forget which episode we talked about, but we talked about hurling with cave, into, into cave trolls. The one guy's list had two cave trolls hurl at each other and you don't knock the cave troll down, but you knock everything in combat. I think the synergy with the bat, with the spider queen, just hurling something at, at, at uh, the cave troll was really, really good. And then you add Gurrits into the mix. And on a, on a Maelstorm battle, you can play space of the cave troll wherever you want. I, I don't know. I'm a really big fan of this list. Like, I think it has a lot of potential. It looks random, but I think its synergy is really fun. Awesome. Yeah, I also really like this list. And I think it has, it's done a good job of kind of pulling together a bunch of different tricks and managing to fit them all in the, the same list. Um, it's got a bit of a terror wall with the, the ring rate there. It's got Cardouche with his, uh, with four trackers to fuel up Cardouche for his um, fireball spells. And then you can use Cardouche itself if you want to fuel up the ring rate. Um, it's got Gurrits uh, to cover the maelstrom of battle scenarios and to give you some march. And then it's got the spy, it's got the bat swarm, which is kind of like a portable, um, uh, transfix spell and then the spider queen that can you know run through all sorts of terrain and grab people around the back um, it, if I wanted to make one suggestion and this kind of addresses mix um, mix issue about Derbers being the leader because I mean I, I get Derbers has heroic defense the problem with Derbers is if you end up in contest of champions uh, he's he's tough to get kills with um, an alternative to doing this is if you're going to get a two ten one ring wraith for the same points, you can make that the Witch King, uh, and then he becomes your leader. I think at that point you sacrifice one of the Goblin Warriors with bow, and you give the Witch King a third might, and you've got enough figures in here that you can drop three or four figures and give the Witch King the Crown of Mortal. Um, if you wanted to, you could probably drop another guy and put him on a horse as well. And uh, then you've got, a, then you've got a leader who's a real threat. Um, you've got, you've only got ten will on him, but with the crown, really does. You can make that, you can make that will last a long time because basically you can, you can one die spells and reliably have them go off. Um, and you've got Cardus there to refuel him if uh, you need to. That would be kind of an alternate way to go. It's it. 
it, the other thing it gives you is it gives you another heroic strike in the list and a kind of a more reliable heroic strike. Derbez has got one, but he's fight four. And heroic strike from fight four, most of the time you're going to use that her, lose that heroic strike roll off. And if you, if you have it with uh, the Witch King, you get one up, plus you can combine it with, if you need to, you can just do a transfix or a compel or something like that. So that would be another possible way to go is to, um, change your leader from Derbers to the, the Witch King, and then you get uh, a real solid caster um, and a real solid killer as well. I actually think that's an excellent point Matt brought up and something kind of overlooked. The Witch King is a bit under-costed um, because for 15 points is the cost upgrade, the, a Ring Wraith to the Witch King, and that same 15 points is what you need to spend to get a 0 10 zero Wraith, which is what the Witch King is. So it like almost makes no sense not to pick him. Um, you know, if you're, if you're just going to pick a normal Wraith and bring him up to 10, it's just like, well, just pick the Witch King. But in this case, I think the goal he was trying to go for was to not make the Witch King the leader. I'm assuming is he didn't want the Wraith to be the leader, but I have to agree with Matt here again, where I'm like, well, the Witch King is just simply better. I think that if the list had 46 models versus 50, I think I still would support it quite a bit. Um, of course, the problem is, do we keep Gerberts in at all? I mean, once we have the Witch King in there, I mean, what do you think, Matt? I mean, as far as, like, I mean, should you just get rid of Derbers? I mean, I, I, like, I like the Cave Troll in there, and I think Derbers is another kind of, he's a, he's a cheap three points of might with a heroic defense and another heroic strike. So I think you keep him in. I guess the question is, is the Witch King... Is the Witch King in the Mordor list a hero of valor or a hero of legend? He's, he's a, hero a hero of valor. Well, according to this book, he's a hero of valor, but I think in the FAQ he became legend. Um, think, yeah, he's, I, he's, I, he's a legend according to FAQ. He's a legend in FAQ. Okay, all right. So he has in to Mordor, be. In Mordor, he is, yeah. Um, so look, I mean, you, you could do something else with those points that, uh, that you're using for Derbers, but I do like the addition of the Cave Troll. The Cave Troll is probably the best bang for the buck as far as a, um, uh, as far as a monster goes. Um, I also think I would probably give him the uh, uh, two handed weapon. Um, but, and you could do that by sacrificing another goblin, but uh, I mean, the goblins are cheap. Derbers is cheap. It's a way to get three more might into this list and another heroic striker and some other cheap guys and a cheap monster. So I mean, I don't have a problem with that. I just think, I would sacrifice just a few guys here and there um, to turn the ring wraith into a, uh, into a witch king with the moral crown, perhaps on horse. And then I think you, you've got another kind of big thread in the list um, beyond what you've already got. Yeah, I, I'm fully on board with that. I think um, as far as Derbert's, I mean, I think the real thing is, yeah, it, it, you have a 70-point leader who, or well, he wouldn't be a leader if you had the Witch King in there, but you have a 70-point character, I guess, with strike and defense. I do think, and maybe someone could correct me in the comments section if I'm wrong, but I do think there is a Mordor character with strike and defense, actually maybe within the new characters that might be the same price or cheaper. So if that's the case the argument for Derberts becomes, well, do you want these goblins whom are one point less and then the cave troll whom is 20 points less than a, uh, what's well, 25, I guess, with this build, uh, less than a mortar troll. Um, this is where I'd really wonder if, a, well, I guess you, with that random cave troll in there, some might argue in the comment section, like, okay, why not just put the ring worth on a fell beast? But what you've done is consolidated your threats a little bit. And I think the purpose of this list from Richard is to, spread his threats out. So if he just sacrifices the cave troll and mounts up the ring wraith and a fell beast, then a wizard only has one rather than two targets to go against. So I do think that his, his choice to not be on a fell beast and just simply, and that's why I think Matt's advice, once again, is great, just simply mount up the uh, witch king on a horse, maybe, uh, is really all that's necessary. Um, I think Mick has a question. What, I'm just, I'm just yeah. raising my hand. Um, I would actually. Oh, sorry. I actually, <laughs> I'm, just seeing, I'm, I'm just seeing the list from my perspective. <laughs> so good. Right. So, um, I think, I think we almost agree on the Witch King, but I'm just yeah. looking through the book, and I actually think, uh, personally, like 
to follow up on this point that you're making about making more, making more threads in, in, in different parts of the list, like not taking FLBs to have another thread in cage draw. What I would probably do actually uh, would be to get rid of the, the, the cage draw, take Shelob, and then swap Durbers for a Druzag. Because that way. You can't. You, you can't do it. Um, you need a hero of Valor from Moria. Oh, yeah, yeah, Valor, yeah, 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 that's true, that's true, that's true, that's true, you can do it. Well, I would still take Shelob over, over Cave Troll, just because um, it, will, it will only be about 15 points extra, but you're looking at something that can actually uh, support Spider Queen through, through difficult terrain, same as, um, same as let's say, Pillworks or, or, or Bossworks can, and also, uh, it's something which, thanks to thanks to a ten a, a, a ten inch movement and additional strength and, and the rerolls and high five value, it it just always seems like a slightly better threat uh, than a, uh, than a cage drop for me, primarily primarily because of the move and especially the uh, the ignoring of the rain. I kind of wish it was like was possible, but yeah, I just I just completely forgot about the FAQ from from, from February, which kind of destroyed that whole idea. I think if you end up doing that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Rainier. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I like that idea, actually. Well, first off, like, Rich, like, I love the cave troll combo thrown in there because it's a real threat. But I get what Mick's saying because when I look at the list, I see a spread out force of a lot of threats. But the only real threat that, like, comes off guard is the Spider Queen because of her movement. Mm -hmm. But if you had Shelob coupled with that, like, that's too two cheetahs coming at you like really fast and they like like Mick said will go through terrain she love can go through terrain above buildings and the, with a the fast movement so especially with Durber or Gurit's special rule for Mailstorm games I think she love is actually a really good take in fact I would probably in that case keep Durbus and maybe swap Cardish out and and try to try to get Trusag in somehow you'll probably be losing something like seven or eight models well, I think I think there is a combination there which could which could potentially give you two big spiders, a bat swarm, two or three fellwargs with those with those upgrades uh, uh, from, uh, from Druzag, which will make life really miserable for for, uh, for your opponents if 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 one of the spiders or if the bat swarm just gets into the right spot. Like even 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 bat, a bat swarm with Druzag's upgrade, uh, upgrade uh, essentially beats virtually anything except a five ten hero. So I think you 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 may want to go the either the Shelob route or the Witch King route. I'm thinking perhaps if you do, but well, if you end up doing both, a couple things happen. First, I think your numbers start to shrink kind of beyond what Richard may want out of this, because I think he does kind of want a swarm list out of this. Um, the other problem is if you get rid of Cardouche, then you lose your your refuel for uh, the Witch King, which I think you want if you're only going to give him ten will. Um, in in an alternative might be, and I, I mean I don't know how the, the points work out on this, but if you were if you were to go Witch King and you still wanted Shelob in lieu of the Cave Troll, you could uh, a, a good sub for Durbers might be um, uh, Zogdush, uh, who's he's the guy who's he's he's uh, fight he's fight fight four. Fight four. Um, he's fight four, but he's three attacks, and he has heroic strike. You can get some orcs instead of goblins. Uh, What's his price? Uh, again? His points. What's his points? He's he's sixty points. So he he has the ability. So he's three attacks, strength four, defense five. But he has the ability to swap his defense with his strength. Right. So he can become strength five, three strength attacks, five. and go down to defense four. He's a he's a he's a very efficient killer for the points, um, and I think probably if you went from Derbers to, uh, I mean you you get some points back to make the jump for um, Shelob from that, so you'd have to sacrifice less figures. It's just, I mean it's an it's another way to go. I, I don't I don't actually have a problem though with keeping Derbers in and keeping the cave troll in. I just think I would, I don't see it's it's minimal surgery to kind of convert the ring wave into a a uh, a fighting witch king. Um, and I think that kind of retains the, the core of the list. I mean, if you want to figure out a way to get in Shelob, I think you can. But I think this list still does what Richard wants it to do if um, it's led by the Witch King. 
I think an yeah. easy way to get Shelob in and keep the Witch King, because I mean, as we discussed, the Witch King is is really minimal to get in. It's basically the same points practically. Um, so uh, one way you could do is, it, so I like Zagdush. I do like that. I was actually looking through options. <clears throat> if you drop down to Gorbag instead, you get an extra five points, which might help keep those numbers from all, like he's going to eventually lose his, um, he's going to lose his goblins, which is nine point difference. So he's going to shrink by that much, which is almost two orcs. And uh, so we need to cover that. Plus now the points increase of the cave troll, 15 points to Shelob and the points increase of getting the witch king with a crown and all this. So he is shrinking a lot. Um, while I haven't done the exact math, I think if you really, really just want to save on points and try to keep your numbers up, Gorbag is an extra five points, which in this case we are trying to really pinch pennies. Um, but he's fight five and three attacks if you just simply throw him into two opponents. So, um, and he's five points less. Just don't give him a shield. Um, if you really, really want to go budget, and I don't agree with this, I think Matt's option of Zagdash or Gorbag is a little bit better than this, but if you really want to budget, you can go Grishnak. He also has Heroic Strike, but, you know, just doesn't have the third attack. So, <clears throat> but I think those are, at least maybe Gorbag might help, like, kind of shrink that. I have to disagree with Mick on the idea of removing Kardash. I think you're going to keep the Witch King in there, and I think, um, and I, I get the the option of, of Jorzag. I, you know, that's not, like, a bad decision to go that route if, if that's the route you want to go. But I do see that with your Horde, you are trying to make it where, Terror is not a problem, number one. And, and two, yeah, the refueling the Witch King if the Witch King becomes your leader. So let me clarify this. If you don't take Matt's advice and you just keep your ring race and he's not your leader, then I can start to side a little bit with what Mick is saying. But if he is your leader, then I think I'm going to keep Kardash in. It's kind of that last fail safe uh, against something that, you know, might take your leader out completely. Um, the other thing is, if you are concerned about, like, random Legolas or, you know, other shots taking out your leader, then I can uh, totally understand not putting the Witch King in at all if you're, if you're trying to, like, okay, I don't want to put any fate on this character. I just want him to be there, and I want to throw him at stuff and, and not have to worry about if he gets shot and disappears. Then in that case, I would still go the route of dropping the Cave Troll, probably taking Shelob instead, and then, yeah, now you have the option of, okay, well... Since you don't need to fuel your guys, maybe you should consider, you know, uh, Drushag instead, and you'll you'll have that as an option. And uh, with your three far wargs, they'll gain courage four plus potential fearless if you cast that spell. Um, and then realistically, your spiders are, you know, as long as you just block off flankers and such, your your two spider threats, you know, rushing in, in there, I think you do enough damage where your horde doesn't need to do a lot. So. So that's my kind of like variables of playing around with that if I were to change this list. But I think, you know, just to round this out and, and we can finish up with final thoughts, I suppose. But, you know, that I think we all agree on one. I think we all like the Witch King better. But if you do like the Witch King, I would probably keep Kardash. I think the matter in that camp. And number two is you can keep the Cave Troll and Durberts. It works. But do consider, you know, seeing about, I mean, your, your alliance in the Moria doesn't seem necessary without the Cave Troll. And if you just simply throw in Shelob, it does quite a bit of the same work, especially with the plus one characteristic. Now her main weakness of Maelstrom is mitigated. You know, that might be a better option for you. But as just long as you more, stay above about sorry. 45 models. So. Just one more final thought from me, I guess. I, uh, I was just looking at the Mouth of Sauron, who uh, fo uh, mounted an, an armored horse is the same point as a Ringwraith, uh, which is, which is 2, 2 one And he's also got Transfix. Uh, so if you're, if you're looking for some Transfix, he might be a potentially better option in that he actually fights quite well. He's got five, 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 two attacks mounted. So he could be a, a potential alternative to the Ring Wraith if you were to keep Derpus as your, as your leader and not go the Witch King route. Actually, I think that's a fantastic thought. What do you guys think does, about that? Does he have strike? He does not. Does not but, have strike. But, but, neither but, neither, does a... but neither does the Ring Wraith. Neither does the Ring Wraith. Yeah. So yeah. So that's a way to go. I think if you if you don't want to go the uh, the Witch King route, it'd be, yeah. it'd be nicer if he had strike. But um, I think he's a good option there. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I would just. I would just fix something minor because on like the list itself works really well. I think. I think. So I kind of agree with Matt and Devin. Like minor. And and Mick too. Like just minor changes. But I don't know if I change. Uh, the Mouth of Sauron because Kardush can like regenerate the will. So the whole game, the Ringwraith can be casting Transfix or the Witch King, you know what I mean? 
And I think that a constant magic threat is what makes this helps make this list scary. I certainly I hope Richard and anyone watching this, I mean, definitely understand all four of us. I think all agree that this list is solid. So you definitely don't mm-hmm. want to go too crazy in the changes. So don't do, take all of the advice that we're saying and morph it into a totally different list. What we're saying is these minor tweaks of hey, maybe transform the witch king and whatnot. I I can agree with Rainier on that, but I do think if you I, I do, I, I can understand it where Rainier is coming from because I think the Mouth of Sauron probably Max is going to get about two spells in unless you have heroic moves that are allowing him to move first. Otherwise, he's not going to be casting spells the whole game. And I think the point of the, the Ring Wraith is to cast spells the whole game while your threats of the Cave Troll, Durberts, blah, 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 Spider Queen and whatnot go in there. So I can understand that from Rainier if that's not the choice you want to make. So um, I'm going to finish off with one last question from you guys real quick. Um, if you took this list to a tournament, what would you be worried about t- coming up against in this with this list? Actually, shooting, shooting in a uh, to the death scenario. That's so like Harad. This. Well, it, either either Harad or um, like you know Rangers or you know, any anything that has a lot of shooting that these guys have to cross. Um, because even with even with marches, it's going to take a while for this list to cross the table. And, you know, this, it, this, this list can lose a lot of figures to mass shooting. Actually, that could be an argument to throw out the goblins in the sense that your march obviously isn't going to cover your entire army, in which case, because um, you only have one character with it. Uh, so in that case, the goblins just end up slowing things down a little bit. But. Well, Martin Sauron would potentially be outing in march as well. Yes, if, if actually ring raves, I, I think have marks. Ring raves have marks, march, yeah. Uh, although, yeah, although you don't really want to be using that that might no. on, on marches, to be fair. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> you burn a lot of might out of this list from just trying to get across yeah. the table. Yeah, I, yeah. I think this. The Spider Queen also is vulnerable to shooting. Uh, uh, behind that mass of bodies, I think you can put at least four or five in the ways before it gets to her. Yeah, but. Because, uh, I mean, that's, she's like critical component number one. I mean, the opponent's going to be trying to take her out. So, um, uh, I would, and I would I, generally worry about Defense 7 uh, because there isn't really, other than Spider Queen and potentially the Cave Troll, there isn't really anything else that does much against high defense. So, if you just bump into a wall of, let's say, Iron, uh, Iron Hills or Guard of Founding Court, then you're just going to bounce away unless the Spider Queen is really able to do something. That's where I guess you can say the argument of the um, having at least a troll at minimum or whatnot, being able to knock them down. I mean, the problem is knocking people down in combat knocks yourself down, so it's arguable that it may not do a lot. But if you can somehow win the next priority and you know capitalize mm-hmm. on all these knockdown troops, but yeah, I think yeah, I agree with them shooting and um, anything that's a really high defense wall. So. All right, uh, Richard, thank you for your list this week. As always, if you have your own list that you want to submit, please put that in the comment section down below, and we'll be looking over those when you post them. Uh, we're going to move on to the main topic of today, which is the Kingdom of Khazad Doom and the Kingdom of Moria. Uh, I want to start off with the Kingdom of Khazad Doom. Um, so, my question to you guys to start off with on that when you take a Kingdoms of Khazad Doom list, is Durn and Auto included in that? All right. It's expensive. <clears throat> It's very expensive. So do you, take, do, you, do you consider him only at higher points? or is yeah, he... yeah, it really depends. If you're, if, you're, if you're playing anything under 500 points, then given, given how expensive all of the basic troops are and how expensive Durin is, um, especially if you want to uh, give people his hard guard upgrade, then you're not really making a very big list. It definitely depends on the point structure. I mean, if we go an 800 point list like before, then <clears throat> I think then Duran becomes uh, not, I don't want to say auto include lower points, but at, at higher points, he's definitely a strong consideration. I think for his points, he adds a lot of value, most specifically in the Hearth Guard. If I can't get a full warband of 18 Hearth Guard, then I kind of start to consider other <laughs> options, as, uh, you know, to cheapen things down. So realistically, what you're investing in is is a character who's like he's not only a 160 points, but he's also an extra, you know, 30 some 40 points or whatnot, you know, for the for the upgrades that you're fielding across. Um, so, but so you do have to consider he's he is a lot of points, and I think for if you're trying to cheapen it down, you you have other options. But um, 
I will say that, yeah. At anything 700 plus, I'm probably starting with him. Uh, he's a leader that's never going away. <laughs> and, or, well, I won't say never. It won't fate, not never, but it, it's definitely fairly difficult to take him out. So um, I do, I personally would take him in, a, in every higher point list, yeah. Yeah, that's what I uh, Matt, I know you won Nova with Iron Hills, but I know this is Duran's folk. So do you find at least, I, I'm not sure if you've played Duran's folk very often, but the dwarf warrior profile, I think, gets overshadowed a lot by the the Kazakh guard, the Iron Guard, and to an extent, the Vault Warden teams. Do you find that the bulk of your army should be regular dwarf warriors, or are they just not worth it compared to the elites? I, I actually, what the list that I play out of this is actually the Kingdom of Moria list with with Balan and Flowey and most of what I use out of that list is the dwarf warriors who I think are actually a really great buy at, I mean, if you get them either with a shield or a bow, they're nine points a pop. And um, for a fight for defense seven courage for a model, that's actually pretty good. Um, and this is a list where, you know, most of your, a lot of your killing tends to be done by uh, heroes because you've got some really choppy heroes, but um I actually find that the Dwarf Warriors are a really good buy um, because you don't have to stick them. You don't have to stick a spear behind them in order to hold up a, uh, in order to hold up a shield wall. They'll do pretty well on their own with just their, their one die, especially if you're taking a pure Dwarf list. The, the faction bonus for this faction is actually pretty good. You basically, you reroll all your ones uh, to wound, which you know, considering you have axes, you don't have to worry about feigning. You can pierce if you want to. They can do a bunch of killing, if you remember that. And it applies to your heroes as well. So um, you've got some big choppy heroes that can uh, that can go in and, and do some killing. I mean, you ask kind of who's the auto-include. And I actually think that the auto-include in this list is actually the king's champion. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, it's like... I, I also like, well, all right, I'm going to buy the King's Champion, and then I'm going to figure out, do I add in Durin to make this a Durin-based list? Do I add in Balin to make this a Balin-based list? Or if I'm at small points level, do I just make the King's Champion my leader and go from there? Um, yeah. You know, if you do the math on him, he's 140 points, but you actually get three models, um, two heralds, each of which have a banner. Uh, and then you've got the King's champion himself, who is a fight six, three attack defense seven hero who, when he's near the heralds can go up to either defense eight or defense nine. If you actually do the math on this, you're buying about 160 points worth of figures for 140 points. Um, and you get two banners, which are really great for a high fight value list like the dwarves. So one of them can hang out near your King's champion. The other can go hang out near your, um, your uh, your other hero, and uh, um, you know get all those re rolls, make you more likely to win the fight, and then you re roll your ones to wound. So, I mean, when I do one of these lists, I start with the king's champion, I buy him, um, and then I decide whether I'm going kind of the Balin direction or the uh, or the Durin direction. A um, couple other things to think about in this list too that are almost must in, must includes, or at least you should seriously think about them. Um, one is the, the dwarf ballista, um, which is a really cheap, let me get down there. It, it's a really cheap 60 point siege weapon, which, uh, it's, it's one of the, it, it doesn't have a blast radius. It's not volley fire. It's one of the piercing shot ones, but it's cheap enough and has enough firepower that what it tends to do is it tends to draw your opponents toward you because otherwise you'll just start taking out their heroes and start taking out their figures, which if you're dwarves is what you really need to do. You don't want to be in a situation where you have to waddle forward at five points a turn um, in order, or I'm sorry, five inches a turn in order to, to get to your enemy. Um, so that's a good include for 60 points. And um, the other thing that's really worth thinking about is if you have uh, points for kind of a third hero, is the Dwarf King, who at 75 points 
um, is he's 15 points more than a dwarf captain. Uh, and for that 15 points, you buy an upgrade from fight five to fight six. So he is a fight six uh, hero. You get an upgrade of defense seven to defense eight. Uh, you get an extra point of will. You get an extra point of courage. And you get the ability to do a heroic resolve. Um, and that's a really great buy for what is essentially a captain level hero that's fighting uh, at the same fight value as uh, Aragorn. Um, and so he's another great add to this list, no matter what you're doing. I'm uh, I, I didn't make, I didn't mean, know Mick had his hand up on. I did, yeah. Yeah, no, I was just going to add to King's Champion that uh, even though he's 140, you will always want a banner anyway. So really, you're not really paying anything for the banner. Uh, that's in it. Uh, I just noticed the, uh, this, this King, Kings, King, Kingdoms of Castle of Doom list, uh, the Dwarf Warriors don't actually have spears. So uh, you will probably want two banners in, the, in that army anyway. So really, you're only paying about 80 points for a King's Champion, or, 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 pos or possibly even less. Uh, although that's, that, that's only the, fir the, the first champion that you buy. Um, yeah, I, I mostly agree with Matt. I also find Floyd Stonehand uh, one of the most interesting characters in the game, and one of my favorite characters in the old, in the old edition of Rules. And I'm really sad that I, that I can't just like throw him into all these other lists these days with Legolas, with all these other characters where it was like just so, so good. And I was like, he's just sitting there, but he doesn't really have, have any, any home to go to. Yeah, you have to take Balin. You can only, yeah. you can only do it if you're doing the Balin <laughs> list, which, which is actually kind of what makes the Balin list fun. And one of the reasons why, why you know, if I'm most of the time when I'm playing this list, I'm playing the, the Balin list is because of Flowey. Because, mm. you know, Flowey is just, if you want to have a fun game, bring Flowey and like figure out the, uh, what the other guy's trick is and then figure out how to screw him up by turning it off at critical times. <laughs> yeah, bring you. Yeah, and uh, I don't, I never, I don't play dwarves that often. But coming against them, I kind of agree with what everyone was saying. Um, my my auto include would be the ballista because it does, as 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 uh, Matt was saying, draws your opponent to you. It's not like a bolt avenger like in Gondor where it does twenty four inches. Like this dwarf ballista can shoot forty eight inches, which is huge. And it even if it only does like one or one or two kills every other turn, it will catch your opponent off guard and freak them out to be like, oh shoot, I don't want him to dismount my heroes or I don't want him to take out these lucky shots. I have to come engage the dwarves. And back to the dwarf warriors, I really like people who spam dwarf warriors with shields for the purpose that defense seven for nine points is insane. Like that's as much as like a minister earth warrior. That's just crazy. So um, I know there's iron guards and even, even dwarf rangers, but if it was me, I would not so much maybe one or two iron guard but the defense six kind of makes the iron guard a soft topic a uh, soft target so i would steer it more towards like heavy on the dwarf warriors because just the bang for your buck when you come against a dwarf player and you see that they have many Kazad guard but you take out a couple you're like okay i'm windling them down but if you come up against a ton of defense seven like nine point warriors you're like oh i'm taking out some dwarf warriors i'm willing them down and it's like oh shoot He's got 40, 44 models. I'm not windling anything down. So, yeah, I, that, that'd be my advice. Just go for that. Yeah. Well, I, um, I mean, another thing I was, I was going to mention just on the subject of Dwarf Warriors is, yeah, I, I actually think they're also a good buy if you just give them the Dwarf Bow. They cost the same thing as the Rangers. Um, the Rangers have shoot three, but with a 24-inch... The Rangers, you end up with a... 24 inch strength to bow at defense five, which I think I, I actually think I prefer the dwarf warriors with the 18 inch strength three bow shoot four, but I'm defense six, um, both because they have the heavier hitting power and uh, they, um, they have the defense six when you get into combat and the difference between defense five and defense six is huge. I actually yeah. bring the rangers really more for throwing axes than their actual longbows, to be honest. So, especially if you have a ballista, it's like you don't need the range to bring them in anyway. Yeah, and the dwarf, the dwarf, the dwarf battle line—you're not going to want to like fight someone 24 inches away. I mean, 
even yeah. Gimli said we're, we're dangerous at short distances. <laughs> so like, you want to you want to keep them that that short bow, eighteen inch to the throwing axe, six inch, and just keep the ballista for like the long range attack. So keep the fights short range. Uh, th this was a good point though that Devin and, and Matt had kind of brought up, which is a lot of times people don't even consider a ton. Like you don't rarely ever see in the kingdoms of Kazatoon list where you see a third bows. It doesn't happen very often. I'm not saying that it can't or you won't see it, but it's not common to see that. So a lot of times people, when they do bring bows, you know, they'll bring like six or maybe they'll bring, you know, anywhere from like six to maybe eight or something like that. But the question that everybody always has is, do you go Dwarf Ranger for, I believe, 10 points or a Dwarf Warrior with bow for, I believe, nine points? Uh, so do you, you guys think that one is much better than the other or you think it's, it's a really hard toss up between the two or do you mix the two together? I think, I think to be honest, one is better than the other. And that's the, that's the Dwarf Warrior, but that's just my opinion. I, I would end up going that route too. Um, I agree that, with that, it, basically, I mean, honestly, I, it, it is kind of funny. You never see a one third list of dwarf shooting. Like it, 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 it is pretty rare. And I think the idea is that like, okay, I'm going into close combat. That's really what I want. Uh, why would I want to sacrifice my defense seven, which as Rainier mentioned is kind of the jewel of these guys. Um, I think if you ended up bringing shooting, you're never going to use it for very long. Most people are not going to, I mean, I don't know how many people are going to go into shooting war with uh, a dwarven line, uh, but especially if it's got a ballista behind it. Yeah, <laughs> I just wrote the list just just now as we're discussing this stuff. An eight hundred point <laughs> list with two kings, uh, king's champion, thirty six dwarf warriors for nine points each. So either with a bow or a shield. So one third of them with bows, and then you can stick three ballistas in there, and that puts you <laughs> on seven hundred ninety four. <laughs> So, so you, so you three. Up with, <laughs> oh so, you're gonna end up with what? 42, 45, 47 models, twelve bows, and three ballistas, and two banners, and like three heroes with fight six. Uh, the reason I wouldn't <laughs> okay. do that. I, 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 think, I think I'm, I'm playing dwarves next. <laughs> I think that's funny, but I probably reduced that by one ballista in the sense that so it, while it's happy, like, so my thought, maybe Rainier and Matt might disagree here, but my thought is because the ballistas stop firing as soon as really combat sort of meets, um, that they, they have sort of a limited effectiveness over time. So usually one brings them in, which is the goal. Two of them, okay, so we're already bringing them in because we have higher defense and we have the ballista. So when you go for two, really you're trying to get kills. And when you try to make your points back with these ballistas on a four-up shooting, I don't know 100% that that's going to happen. You just shoot the heroes. That's all you do. <laughs> <laughs> like Shatter it off. <laughs> shoot, shoot Azog three times, and, <laughs> and you fight back all the points. <laughs> One thing that's actually interesting about these ballistas that you could probably do if you had three of them the neat, one of the neat things about these ballistas is they are by far the smallest, and this is in base size siege weapons in the game, they're, they're on a foot base. And what that allows you to do is you can actually put them in your front line. Usually you're like kind of hiding your siege weapon back so it can like fire over things or through holes or stuff like that. I just put this thing in the front line of my dwarves. So I've got this ballista with its two guys behind it, and then I got a line of dwarves on either side. And, you know, what the other guy, I mean, what has happened on a couple of occasions is, you know, they'll come up, they'll charge my line, somebody moves into contact with the, contact with the ballista, the ballista can still shoot. There's no rule that says that it can. And then you know, it shoots, it hits that guy in contact, blows him back, then he's got to try it again the next turn. And if, and even if he doesn't, you know, even if he, even if you don't blow him back, he's got to to destroy that ballista. He's got to stay in contact through an entire turn from priority phase to end phase. So then you just, if you don't blow him back, you just charge him the next turn, fight him off, and then the thing can fight again. But you know, if you actually put like three of these in a front line of dwarves, and you know, it it, it it's almost. It's almost like the regimental guns in a Napoleonic line <laughs> where, you know, you've got the, the troops on either side and then, you know, people are charging out and you know, they get the, the guns are going off blowing guys back. Oh, man. That's so what the shot does. It actually blows people back uh, out of contact. And that's really funny. 
Mick made a comment about three ballistas and it's actually turning into reality. I'm just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I may have to go <laughs> buy some more ballistas. <laughs> yeah, Devin and I are like, what? <laughs> it sort of follows everything we've been saying in, in, like in, uh, 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 in our previous meetup, in that you either spam things or you just don't bother. <laughs> so, <laughs> spam, spam Which is them. totally the opposite advice we've given on <laughs> Richard Lin's uh, list <laughs> <laughs> just like earlier. Well, I was trying to spam spider queens and she loves in his lists and <laughs> I, was, I was just trying to do it quietly at the time. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask one more question. We'll finish up on Kaz Doom. Uh, if you take Durin, do you always take the one plus one to wound upgrade on the Kazi guard? And do you try to fill it out to 18 every single time? So that's, I guess that's almost 400 I... points. What's that? That's almost 400 yeah. points. It is. You're right. It is. It is. It it is. It's a lot All of right. points. So I think the advice of, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's a lot of really key dwarf players overseas. Uh, and most specifically, I'm talking about the GBHL. And uh, in there, there's particular players who have played winning lists for dwarves, and I don't believe they fill the ranks with Hearthguard. Like, I don't actually think they go do all of it hearthguard because it's it's also the fact that you are spamming out cousin guard which in of itself are very expensive now you turn them into a 13 point model you are going to have a very very small list so i think i know earlier i said i'd be very tempted to spam out 18 of these guys um and i still am but i think if you really wanted to do it competitively you probably wouldn't you probably would just have enough to make it where your troops are actually threatening because the problem with the dwarves is in the battle lines they fight one-on-one -on -one because there's no spear supports um unless you ally of course but you know if you're not allying you have no spear support so oftentimes the tendency or at least from my perspective i don't play dwarves all that often but is to use the dwarves to hold the line while the kings kill so the hearth guard create another killing potential plus the iron guard and such but that's my thought. I think you probably wouldn't spam them just because of what Mick said. It's like 400 points to do it. So, All right, so I'm going to move over to Matt because this seems to be something Matt enjoys to do. So I'm going to ask Matt this question first. Um, when you're playing the Kingdoms of Moria, do you find, even though Balan can take 18 people, for 110 points, he's just that little bit too fragile? Because he only has uh, one fate and two wounds. Well, I mean, uh, the first answer to the question is: if you're playing Kingdom of Mari, you have to take Balin. Um, so, uh, and you know, if 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 you're not taking Balin, you know, why bother with the Kingdom of Moria? Um, he is he is a bit fragile, and he's actually surprisingly he's surprisingly fragile. Um, he's he's one less defense. Uh, he has one less attack, and that's kind of the 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 key thing um, uh, with him. Um, but you know, at 110 points, I think he's probably worth what you get for him. And you just have to be you just have to be careful, kind of where you put him in. He's not the guy that you're just gonna kind of send to go head to head with uh, the you know the enemy's super killer. Um, you know, you have, you have other people who can do that. But as far as somebody who can just kind of stand in the middle of a line of dwarves and fight, uh, he can do that. And he comes with, I mean, he does have heroic defense if he, if he needs it. And the long beard special rule is actually fairly useful in the end game. Um, so, I mean, I, I think he is worth his points. But you got to remember, he's a 110-point hero, and he's not going to be able to take on a 160-point hero and, and live. Yeah, actually, I was shocked how surprisingly fragile he is, too. When you really think about it, like, you look at the defense eight. Defense eight against most heroes, strength four, it's still six. So most of them are not going to have a problem dealing two wounds to him with the potential to kill him outright if he fails that one fate that he has. So it's it's actually very surprising how easily it is you can take him out, as long as you get through his fight six. Yeah. So. I mean, the real issue with him is his two attacks and his two wounds. And... Yeah, you know, which makes him, uh, you know, about three-ish three, three -ish attacks. If you count the re-roll with Durin's yeah. axe, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really yeah. three-ish. But even so, so, I mean, part of what makes Durin so durable is the fact that he has three attacks and the re-roll, and if you put a banner behind him, you can re-roll another die. And he's got three wounds, and he's got the silly hat that um, lets him get a, a – uh, I think it's a 
It's a fate save, auto fate save. No, no, he doesn't have that. Yeah, he, uh, he just has heavy armor and Durin's axe. You're, no, you're talking about Durin. Durin. Oh, you're talking about Durin. Sorry, I'm, yeah. for some reason I'm still. Durin has the extra um, yeah. uh, fate save of six, which which Balin doesn't have. But uh, but yeah, I mean he he's fragile, but you know he's especially at lower points levels. I think he's the guy that you want to take. I think if you're fighting at 600 points, you want to do a Kingdom of Moria list as opposed to a uh, something that's centered around Durin. So I really I like. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, I really like Balin's special rule uh, when uh, when he enables a reroll of the priority. I would love to be playing him in something like Rivendell Knights list, but suddenly that's not going to work. But, uh, but still, uh, I I I don't really hate Balin that much uh, because at the end of the day you're still rolling three dice to to, add, to win combat. So so really he is a three three attack hero. Uh, one fate sucks, but it's still defense eight. So he shouldn't be dying too often. He shouldn't be, he shouldn't really be that fragile. Although I don't really have it, uh, that much experience using him. Um, he, he, he's on par with like a Legolas. Yeah. 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 That's, I mean, he's, he's one of those things where let's say it was towards the end of the game and, um, you know, maybe you only have one might left. And let's say you got surrounded by, let's say, six guys, so you're trapped. If, for whatever reason, Balin doesn't roll at least a five, he's probably going to die. Like, it, it's just one of those situations where as long as they're doing what they should do and, you know, maybe they're, they're uh, stabbing or they're piercing striking or if they're just strength four in general, if you have around 12 dice, you're probably going to kill him. And then it's just one of those things where it's like, oh, it's so frustrating because not only do I lose my, you know, my auto passing courage for one turn, but then I've just lost my general. Um, I've lost one of my best hitters. You know, it, it's just a very frustrating thing with, with Balin where you know he's decent, but he can just be countered so quickly if you don't roll well enough. But like we said in the previous um, list, you know, if you have a, a King's champion, you're probably going to put him right next to Balin. So then not only do you have your two attacks, you have your reroll from Durin's Axe, plus you have the reroll from the banner. So you have four chances to try and, and do well with him. Um, but that's, that, that kind of brings me into what I wanted to say. So we talked in the previous one where a King's Champion is like an auto-include kind of a thing. Because, you know, for his points, he is just unbelievable. So let's say you include an auto, you auto-include the King's Champion with Balin. Do you then go with Gimli, or do you go with uh, Flo? You go with Floey. Do you go with you go with Floy? or do you go with Oin Ori? Because you know they're they're relatively cheap, and you can take. Do you go with the Dwarf King? Gimli? Did you say Gimli? You make yeah, Gimli's in the list. Gimli's in the list. Gimli's yeah, in the list. if you if you take if you take the King's oh, yes. Ori, you can take Gimli. So, so, so my question is: more than likely uh, in, in most Dwarf lists, at least higher points, you're never going to see really more than three dwarves because you want to get your numbers up. So who becomes that third dwarf if the King's Champion and Balin are already in there? It's Flowey. I mean, yeah, the other reason that you take Balin is to take Flowey and use him because of, of the tricky stuff he can do. I mean, he's, he's 75 points, so he, and he's, I think, I think he's... Uh, fortitude. He's fortitude, so you get 12 guys from him. And just the, the tricks he can pull with those with his three points of will, plus you get extra points every time you kill a monster or a hero, um, are are just worth it. And it's just not only not only are, are the tricks important, but the ability just to disrupt the other guy's plan with Flowey. Because you gotta remember the other guys who the, who you're fighting has a plan and he's come up with some dirty tricks that uh, he's gonna use to um, to you know, trick you out. And, and Floey just is like, no, you're not going to do that this turn. And that really kind of gets inside of the head of the guy that you're playing. And you get, you get some neat synergies with other stuff. Like for example, you know, you've got your ballista and the other guy's got the shadow Lord. Well, Floey just turns off the pall of darkness. Yeah. You know, if he's got the, if he's got the, um, three ballistas, three ballistas. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, if, uh, if the other guy, 
you know, if he's if he's got the undying, you you turn off the undying special rule where he gets to use his will as fate. He goes pop as soon as you hit him. No, uh, there's there's all sorts of tricky stuff you can do with Floyd. Floyd's a lot of fun. Um, so do you guys agree with Matt? Is Floyd the the third auto included in a balance list in a Kingdom of Moria? Only if you take three ballistas with him. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think I think we've all agreed that the new meta is three ballistas. Three ballistas. I'm sticking with signal tower. I pr I I'm so I'm <laughs> so hopeful. And a signal tower. You put the three ballistas on the signal tower, <laughs> and then you shoot from down. <laughs> I I pray that I go to a tournament next and I see like three or four people with three ballistas. Just they're like, <laughs> just yeah, I heard it in your people. podcast. I wanted to try it out. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you do. Like, let us know in your next tournament. Please, <laughs> somebody go to a tournament with three ballistas and let us know how you do. I mean, and, and also with Floyd and ballistas, like Floyd has a special rule that like you're you're regaining will points every time your warriors kill some uh, uh, kill an enemy hero. Mm -hmm. So like you can just be turning off all those pallet knights, all of all of those special rules for undying, all the all the guardrails, blinding light. And just shooting them with the ballistas and regaining all that will, and then and then moving it on to, on to other things. <laughs> um, I think I want. Oh, oh. Well, I was curious about addressing two types of lists that you can do with either the uh, Army of Moria or the Army of Khazad Doom. Uh, you can do it either way, and one of them. Uh, so uh, people see two units in this and and kind of start to create particular builds. One of them is Iron Guard, and I think we've been remiss to talk about this um, Iron Guard. If you back them up with like, let's say an elf or an Arnorian or something, something with a spear, and this? then have banners on top of it, I have played this personally in tournament, and although it did well, it crumbled against hordes that could continuously throw the next body and the next body at me. But what do you guys think about that combination? Would you just have a battle line of let's say ten Iron Guard, King's Champion, of course, give them all the banners, and then a back line of spears? I I don't, I don't think so. Um, mm. Because Iron Guard are 15 points. That's quite a lot. I know Mick and I, in a previous Rad episode, say spam Watcher Sakarna, spam Abrakan Guard. But that's because they're nine points. Um, I think the idea of spamming a defense six Iron Guard for 15 points is just yeah. not... It goes against everything we've been talking about. We've been talking about massive high defense bodies and like 12 ballistas. I mean, three ballistas. <laughs> no, but, 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 but like, don't, I don't... I don't like the idea too much because when I go against a dwarf player, I see like, okay, there's a soft target in Iron Guard. There's the other Iron Guard. There's the other Iron Guard. And usually they'll die in shooting or they'll die fast, like one bad combat and they're dead usually. A Moran and Orc can, can kill them on a five. So I wouldn't spam them at all. Yeah, I, I, tend, I tend not to spam them when I play. I tend to take like three of them, three or four of them when I play. And they, what they do is they kind of go around in front of the, um, in front of the, <clears throat> the heralds, the banner bearers that go with the king's champion. So they've always got a reroll behind them, and they always fight as you know part of a line, which is something that's important to remember when you're playing dwarves. Is this is this is an army that always wants to fight in a battle line. If they get surrounded, they get killed. Um, and if you're in a position where you know you've got 12 attacks going in against Balin, you, you put Balin in the wrong place. Uh, and because they don't, one of the kind of s sneaky side benefits of not being able to have spears is you can really have a longer battle line than everybody else does. And you really ought to take advantage of that. And uh, you just have your chain of dwarves with maybe a couple guys behind that can step into gaps as guys go down. But you always want to have your, your kind of wall of, of dwarves so that one of your guys is fighting no more than one of the opponent's figures. Mm. It's an iron guard. You're probably going to take him down. So um, and I guess, Oh, well the other one, and I just wanted to bring this up because once again, I think people will bring this up is Alistair King is a GBHL member. I think it was Alistair and, and Mick can correct me if I'm wrong. Cause it was a GBHL member who won a tournament with uh, spamming vault warden. Now vault warden, we didn't bring up at all. And that's why I want to touch on them. Uh, they, they're essentially 15 points for two models, which means really one is, let's say, I don't know, eight points and the other one's nine or something like That's that. That's 25, 25. Yeah, 25. 25. Or 25, so it's like 15 and 10. Or so, yeah, yeah, something like that. Uh, 25 points, but yeah, good correction. So um, I have, once again, never found a lot of success 
spamming these guys, but is this something you would be more inclined to spam than the Iron Guard, which we talked about earlier? Um, yeah. I, I, I was thinking about this all week, and I've played dwarves, at least this faction of dwarves, multiple times. And I know people are opposed to them, but I just look at them in the new rules. The front guy is defense nine. And the only way to kill that guy is to literally kill him. You can't rent him. You can't hurl him. You can't uh, barge him. He is there to stay. So you have to kill him straight up. Plus, you have a spear support behind. I know what most people might say. Well, if you move the spear support, they get minus one to win the fight. They're still defense nine. So they could just be there to hold the line. You could then move that spear support if it did get moved to support, let's say, a hero. And then you have even more attacks. I think Vault Wardens, because if you divide them evenly, let's say 12 points for the Spearman and 13 points for the front guy. I mean, we were just talking about um, the Hearth Guard for 13 points apiece, and we said that they're helpful. I think if you take Vault Warden teams, you can hold the line, you can get two attacks, plus you have a King's Champion in there, so you have a third attack. Plus, if you stay pure, you're re-rolling one. So you have two attacks at strength four, re-rolling ones, and you have a banner to support. I think they are extremely good, and I'm surprised we don't see them more often. So, I mean, I've never spammed these things because I only own one. Um, but I'd be curious to know, and Nick, you may know the answer to this, how Alistair uses them. I mean, they... The problem with the problem with spamming these guys is you end up with a very short line, and once somebody gets around the back and starts engaging the guys with the foe spears, I think this crumbles because the the front guys suddenly get a minus one on their uh, dual rolls, and they're probably going to end up being trapped. But I'm I'm curious how he uses them tactically. I have no idea. This is ah. this is the first time I hear about this. Ah, well then, <laughs> all right. So this was a tournament that happened recently, but basically he had like three dotted in each warband so don't think like the entire army was oh, ball warden it, it yeah. wasn't it, but it was it was like three here 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 it's like he had like 12 of them and um I, I mean when you do the math on them they're pretty points efficient considering they have essentially iron hill stats like they're strength four which is sneaky with them um but i mean i think before i tried this list out actually for articon in a previous tournament where uh originally you didn't need a foe spear to back them up you needed just a spear so I was like, okay, cool. I'll bring Lake Town so that way I don't need the actual spears of the, you know, the, the faux spear guys. And I can just, you know, have these guys running around behind them and all that. Um, uh, now they have to be guarded by the faux spear. And I think what Matt said is true. They, they get surrounded. Um, so you definitely want to like spam out something on the flanks. But you probably can't bring three ballistas with these guys. <laughs> but... You know, I don't know. I thought you might have had some insight into what he specifically did with these. I know he talked about it on Facebook, and uh, after he had he either won or placed really high, like top three, and it, it, yeah, everyone was very curious about this vault warden spamming he did. Um, but I thought you might have had more knowledge. Unfortunately, it seems like everyone on here, I own about nine vault warden, and, and I've never never taken them to a full tournament. I just I was underwhelmed by spamming them. So I don't know. Maybe I did it wrong. I did also notice plus one to wound tends to make them points inefficient. So if your opponent does have burly or some sort of plus one to wound mechanic, they do get taken out pretty quick. Um, I was playing in a game just as practice with them, and uh, there was a Haradrim Lance line that charged right into me and just destroyed <laughs> all of my Vault Warden. Um, cause then you knocked down plus, you know, plus one of wounded. It was really effective for her to do this for the 12 point model. So, um, so that was something that really hurt, but that was my experience with it. So. I wonder if you, I wonder if you put one of these guys next to the ballista in the front line so that he, yeah. so that it has to, if you want to go in and, and get at the ballista, you have to charge these guys. So then you're going to have to get three of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You need to get three of them. Right? So, or at least two. Of them. This this episode should just be named "Bring Three. Yeah, bring three. Yeah, actually, you could just alternate ballista, vault warden team, ballista, vault warden team. Yeah, if you do that, you bring eight ballistas. Like, why not? Well, the the problem oh, is you, you, need, you need you need eight captain level heroes in the army. Remember, you got to wait. We were just talking about spamming, and if we if you have Captain Liver Heroes, then you can really spam. So I'll, I'll give you an example. So I just made a list real quick, and it was it, it's um, 
relatively, it, it, it's Durin, a king's champion, and a dwarf king. And you get 16 dwarf warriors, five Khazad guard, and nine Balt Warden teams. So you have 18 plus 21 um, plus the five heroes, so 44 models. And I bet you that does pretty well. You have a lot of you have a lot of ability to hold the line. You have Durin in there plus the King's Champion, and a Dwarf King's not something to laugh at. You have, like I said, nine Vault Warden teams, so you have nine spears. So in case you need, to, let's say you just want to stick uh, Vault Warden uh, the Shield guy into like a hero, you just have him hold on the line as much as possible. And then the other ones can be there to support. You have your Dwarf Warriors who are your numbers. They're going around the flanks. Vault Warden's holding the main lines. And then you have your big heroes. And, I, th you know, 44 models for dwarves, that's not something to laugh at. And you, you get a lot of value out. I think Vault Warden, I'm surprised more Vault Warden teams aren't taken. They're expensive. Like, I think that's one reason the states yeah. are kind of expensive. And the, the, this type of build, like a lot of the American players don't really, the, the competitive ones want to play with something they consider more new or are fun so usually in the states you see newer players play kaza or just yeah people who haven't who aren't that into the competitive scene but I they're think expensive you, yeah. that's why to get around that price i think the only way to really make it work is even if you break it up into 13 and 12 points it's still expensive models and so the only way to really make it work i think you have to go with more the route of one king's champion maybe and then also well probably yes and then um uh, kings, dwarf kings, like Matt had mentioned, just cheapening the cost of your heroes, or if not dwarf kings, then just captains to bring them in. I think you really have to sacrifice on the big heroes, otherwise you just simply don't have much. And I think that's where you know people kind of. But once again, I'd be curious on how Alistair actually did it. I should have looked that up before. But uh, let us know in the comment section below if you've ever used vault wardens in spam, or if you've used them in general. If you find them worth their points. Um, I want to end this on one last question. If you had to pick between the Kingdoms of khazad or Kingdoms of Moria, which one are you going with? Oh, um, I, I think I actually probably would choose Kingdom of khazad mostly because, but just for me personally, I think um, I love Floyd, and it is sad I can't get him in my list, but um, I like my alliance options, number one, but two, I think the heroes are a little bit stronger. I mean, Ori is... Okay, um, it, you know, but I, I think my options, kind of wondering, just before I answer this question, the Kingdom of Moria, all it restricts me from taking is exactly what? It's your alliances all go to impossible, and then... You alliances can't take Durham. Alliances go to impossible. The heroes that you can take are Balin, Flowey, the King's Champion, the Captains, um, and... Ori, Oin... Gimli. Ori Ori and Gimli. So you can't, I think you can't take the, um, I don't think you can take the king, and uh, obviously you can't take uh, Durin. So you can't take kings and Durin. Okay, so that does kind of change things up a little bit. I don't think Dur Durin is so important, especially at lower points, that I need to take him. So I think actually in lower points games, I actually would probably be more tempted to take uh, Balin in his list because I'm probably not allying anyway. And then a higher points list, especially when I do probably want to bring allies, and I'm going to bring Durin's folk, uh, the actual kingdom of Cause of Doom. So I actually, I'll change my answer to that because now that I'm hearing, I'm not really losing much. I mean, uh, so I, I'm, except for the Kings, I think that's probably maybe the most significant loss. I know mean, that sounds weird, but like, that's probably really it. And I don't know if that's worth, I, or really the alliances. So that's my thought. Uh, probably above 700 points is when, 700 plus is when I bring kingdom of Cause of Doom. I think that's exactly right. That's what I was going to say is at 700 points for above, you take Kingdom of Cause of Doom. Below 700 points, you take Kingdom of Moria. I agree. Yeah. I agree, yeah. All right. Uh, leave in the comment section below your thoughts on both lists, uh, if you get along better with one than the other. And we're going to move on to our next topic now, which is the duel. So you guys voted, and you decided that Devin has won the last episode against Rainier. Um, I know Dev or Rainier's very devastated about that. Cause it's rigged. It's rigged. All <laughs> rigged. <Thank> you. rigged. <laughs> um, so the, the scenarios that they were given, uh, it'll be Mick versus Devin. They were given 600-point lists, just like previous episodes. So they, they created new lists. Um, the three scenarios they were given were to the death, 
Contest of Champions and Lords of Battle. Uh, they don't know which one it's going to be until I mention it, and they don't know the board they're going to be on. So I'll reveal to the, the board to them right now. And this will be the board. All right. Uh, it's, it's not too and, bad. Not too bad. It should be okay. So the yeah, board is a uh, grass board, and it has a river going down the left side of the board. And it has two patches where you can cross it around the left bottom part and the top left part. Uh, there's also a bunch of dead trees all scattered around the thing. And there appears to be a couple areas of woodland terrain, but I'll let them discuss whether or not they want to call that woodland terrain. There's also a boat. Don't forget the boat. Oh, there's a huge... I mean, the boat's the most important part. Let's not, let's not lie to ourselves. Hmm. Are, we, are we able to control the boat, actually? actually. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving models over. Can, can we just yeah. recreate the uh, barrels out of bonds from the movie? There, just... there are rules for that, by the way, in, uh, in for, for the Lake Town board. Um, and I think they show up. They show up in one of the white dwarf articles that was about Lake Town, and they also show up, I think, in the Battle Company's uh, thing on the Lake Town board, where you can actually like get in the boats and paddle them around. It's a lot of fun. We've done it. Um, so now I will dis I will tell everybody what the scenario is going to be. So I have decided. You know what? Let's make it a little fun. Let's keep it simple. We're going to go with to the death for the scenario. All right. Okay. What are your What are your reactions to to the death? Yeah, yeah. I'm that's sad. Not, that's not, that sounds okay. I'm sad a little bit. My my list. Uh, I I had two list options I wanted, and uh, one of them had a banner, the other one didn't. I chose the one that didn't. So. <laughs> that's okay. I, I don't have a banner either. <laughs> okay, so me, me and Mick both screwed up. <laughs> um, right before we go into the list. Um, I'm just going to go over the scenario real quick. So it, they're allowed to deploy up to 12 inches on their half. Uh, they get one victory point for wounding the leader, three for killing. They get three victory points for breaking the force, five if, they're, if they break and they're unbroken. They get one for having a banner, and then get two if they have a banner and the opponent does not have a banner. You know. And they get two victory points if the enemy force is reduced to 25% of its starting total. Um, so I'm going to start off with Devin. Devin, what list did you decide to Actually, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait. Before, before we review the list, list, can we just agree on the terrain? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I actually made this one in like 20 minutes at one of my tournaments. So I was shocked that I see one of my boards here. But uh, how we played it, just you guys don't have to play it this way. But the river, those little places where you can go through the river, um, those are open ground. We always played it because for mobility. Um, when you guys get close to the bushes and stuff, there's quite a lot of hedges, so that it covers quite a lot of line of sights, just so you guys know. And yeah, we played it how these are all these are all woodland terrains. Yeah, outside I, mean, I, of them, I picked this like board because I, I thought oh. really bad that you got knocked out, so I figured I'll just give him one of his boards. Hey, thank so. you, thank you. I'll give you the money later. Okay, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll take PayPal or Venmo, please. Um, <laughs> so, I, I, yeah, I mean, obviously, I think this board is pretty self-explanatory with the exception of the river points, which I would agree should probably be just clear terrain. But I, I wouldn't mind if they were difficult. Like, I wouldn't argue it. Um, and, I, think, uh, I think this should be clear. Yeah, so clear. Um, and I'm fine with that. Shallow water. I never do deep water in tournaments. I think yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, and then uh, the, everything else is – when you see these little circles, there's like five points of circles that have woodland terrain on them. Those would just be difficult and just call it a day at that pretty much. So I would probably so the, this. So the forest or just difficult terrain? Uh, oh, oh, forest, woodland terrain, sorry. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's a okay, very fine. clear distinction. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it is, considering my list. Um, just keep in mind, everybody that's uh, watching and listening, um, this is UK versus England again, or UK versus uh, America again. I think it'll so, be like that for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so I want to start off with Devin's list. So Devin, what list did you decide to take at 600 points? All right, so um, I will advise in advance and probably take this more like 700, but I really wanted to do it. So we're going to see how this goes. Um, so I have my revised Return of the King Legion. And uh, that is King Elisar on armored horse, leading 10 fountain court guard with shield and spear. Or I'm sorry, just, well, yeah, they have spears by default, so shield and spear. Um, and then uh, I got the King of the Dead leading 10 men of the dead with shields. 
So I have 20 models, all defense, seven or eight, depending. And uh, then I have King LSR and the King of the Dead. So 22 models in total. Can't the men of the Dead. Going to outnumber me. You why? I thought you were going to outnumber me. You thought so? <laughs> I, 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 think, I think I might just outnumber you by like one. <laughs> I, I was actually considering an, a, a Numenor uh, Lothlorien list with a Sealer and Caliborn, but I was just like, all right, let me just go into this. But, um, but so yeah, I got 22 models. I may outnumber Mick by one, so I'm very interested to hear what Mick brought. Um, I think the river, you know, yeah, sure, my men of them move over it like clear, but I, I'd be honest, depending on what licks that Mick even has, it probably won't even come into play. I'll probably just deploy the right side of the river and because of how well, actually i have to think of it another way because actually just so new players out there you can actually flip the board where the river is like on just like we are actually deploying on that side of the river so depending on what mick has i'll say my deployment so it, it does actually matter but beyond that i mean yeah my list is super simple you pretty much keep the men of the dead in front most likely using the Harpinger for the terror aspect. Um, you know, the Fountain Court Guard have she, uh, spears, so depending on what Mick brought, I can actually either keep on fight with him or, uh, you know, be maybe even above. So the Return of the King Legion, my issue with it, one, Aragorn's depowered. He's actually on foot. And, yeah, he's a banner, but, I mean, ultimately he, he gets a little fragile on his defense five and such. And then um, my other issue is the Men of the Dead are fight three. So they tend to lose a lot of fights. So here I decided to do a little bit of a mix. And the only reason I did a mix is not so I could do 10 spears, 10 shields. That's not the reason why. I actually did the, the perfect 10-10 because uh, Fountain Court Guard are cheaper by like four points. So um, that's the reason. I, <laughs> they're cheaper. I actually strongly considered just filling out on Men, of, uh, men at Arms. And just keeping, um, not men at arms, but the um, the Warriors of Minas Tirith, and just keeping, you know, my defense fight three. But I wanted to keep the fight seven or defense seven models uh, and fight four plus bodyguard. And like, all right, let me just go ahead and keep it out there. So yeah, LSR is now a hard hitting tank. I mean, he still gets the banner bonus regardless. Um, I really don't lose a lot from the Legion, and the only reason I said I would probably play this at 700 is because LSR just became 100 points more expensive. <laughs> or no, 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 sorry. Is it 100 points? It's not 100. It's, it's slightly less than that. But he became more expensive than your traditional Aragorn, um, especially since I do not get Aaron Durrell for free, So, uh, which would cost me two men of the day, about, about two-ish. So I'm playing a sacrifice here where I now get a much harder hitting Aragorn, uh, but don't, but basically don't lose a lot of the benefits that Return of the King Legion gives me. So that's my quick analysis of it. So go ahead, Mick, what's your list? Right, so this, is a, this is also going to be a very thematic the, battle. What were the Men of the Dead armed with? Uh, all shields. Okay, got it, thanks. Okay, so the, the defense eight on the front, okay. Maybe, you have no please, balls, yeah? please tell me you okay. are taking Moranids. This will be amazing. Uh, <laughs> well, well, this is going to be a very thematic, almost sort of black gate sort of situation, if only the, if only the army of the dead got, got that far. So, Warband 1 has Shadow Lord on Fell Beast, four Black Numenorians, four Orcs with Spears, and Axis for free. Warband 2 has a Ring Wraith on Fell Beast with two Might, ten Will, and two Fate, um, with three Black Numenorians, three Orcs with Spears. And Warband 3 is exactly the same with Ring Wraith on Fell Beast with two, ten, two, three Black Numenorians and three Orcs with Spears. So have to, I have 23 models, six might, and this was actually going to be my Articon list this year. Had our oh. Articon not been cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so let me make sure I understand. You have three Fell Beasts, one being the Shadow Lord, and yeah. you have two others that are, what, what are their stats? Two, ten, two. Why isn't one of them the Witch King? <sighs> <laughs> That's how much he thought about that Articon list. <laughs> okay. Yeah, actually, All right. why, why yeah. isn't it a witch king? Right, <laughs> so <laughs> I am gonna roll oh, a die. Oh I know, because because of the numbers, because I really wanted to outnumber Devon here. It's I, the I, same I got twenty three. It's the same points. You just write in witch king rather than uh, <laughs> ring red. 
Okay. It really okay. is the okay. same okay. point. Okay. Let, let, let's, let's assume it's the Witch King then. <laughs> I, 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 I misspoke. Prefer... It's actually the Witch King. I, I just misspoke. I prefer your first list, Mick, your actual Articon list. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Witch King has better casting values. So. <laughs> also, also, Witch King might be eligible for an extra might point and has heroic strike. So. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> okay, so just, just for this game. See, already my Articon list has been improved. So just for this game, we're going <laughs> to go with the, with, with the weaker version. Right. The thing is, if, if I can beat you in this game, then really England can beat America in any situation. So, <laughs> Kevin, do not lose this. So obviously, you know, with that list in mind, um, Three Felbies. Okay. So he has very, very limited numbers, which is the obvious critical flaw of his list. And I'm thinking, you said you said a couple Miranda's, I think a couple Black Numenorians, but overall your defense five orcs. Am I correct? No, no, no. So it's it's ten Black Numenorians. Uh, essentially, in summary, it's ten Black Numenorians, ten orcs, and three Felbies. Miranda, Miranda orcs or? No, just normal. No just more normal orcs. orcs. Okay. They, so that they, means... they, they all carry axes, just, just in case, just so you know. Just again. Well, so fortunately, the axes don't do a hell of a lot, although they will be useful against the Men of the Dead. But once again, my ranks are... And by useful, what I mean is he takes no disadvantage, but then now can wound him on straight sixes. So, Wait, um, Devin, do you have any bows? I do not have any bows, no. Well, that's the thing. I have black darts. So, so you're coming to me. I think I was... Yeah, I mean, I was probably going to come to you anyway, to be honest. <laughs> but I think, I think reasonably, there's no really... Coming to, I mean, me and Mick could reasonably just like stare just, at each other. Just deploy, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I, honestly, I don't see Mick kind of staying in place for the most part. I mean, he could throw some ring rays up, but one bad priority roll off, and and I could probably catch a fell beast with Aragorn. Um, so I don't think he's gonna like send simply like a fell beast out by itself or anything like that. I, I mean, I wouldn't anticipate it anyway. Um, but essentially all right so i have to move up to him probably gonna get hit with a such a bombardment of spells that aragorn is not going to be rendered <laughs> very useful this game um so that's where i hear three felbies and my threat options being simply uh elisar uh king of the dead so king of the dead is interesting in the fact that he does have two attacks he has fight five so he's not exactly a slouch against um a, a ring rays or anything really and if he does charge into me then the king of the dead can grab one of these things and if i win that's a done felbies like it's over uh at that point um i think felbies what courage three something that's like that yeah. yeah so i'm two attacks strength four hitting on his courage value and one wound and it's over so well, i can actually wait a second does it work that way that doesn't really work that way does it or what no, I thought you only take the um because I'm when I'm striking you, you don't get to swap stats. I don't think. I think it's only when like yeah, no, that makes are sense. You, are you automatically killing a fell beast if you if you want? Yeah, I'm going it against doesn't your have fate. It, it doesn't, doesn't have, have fate. fate. The fell beast is gone. But it's not a model. It's a it's it's a piece of war gear. No, the, it's not a war gear. It's an actual. They're they're separate profiles, and I'm attacking one uh, profile. If I uh, hit your horse, warg, or in this case a fell beast, it's auto killed. Okay, well, I'm glad you know the rules, because otherwise, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, keep in mind, your, you? your, your wraith would survive. Let me clarify, for anyone who thinks I'm killing the wraith too, I'm not. I'm just killing the mount. The mount would die. So um, he would have to pummel magic into the king of the dead in order to stop him from just one-shotting fell beasts. Um, but the king of the dead has six will, so... and. Arguably, I think his attention is probably going to be more on King Elisar, to be honest. Yeah. Um, with King Elisar, I don't expect he'll survive on his horse for very long. I think he's probably going to do hurls into King Elisar. Um, so even if I surround him with bodies in an attempt to prevent him from being assassinated, I don't think that's really going to work. I think reasonably, I just have to get King Elisar to a point where a heroic move-off can occur, and I can prevent the spells from even happening. With my entire battle line being either Courage 6 or, you know, bodyguarded, I mean, I can grab up Fel Breeze pretty easily. I can handle probably one or two spells against him, um, probably once we actually the battle line's hit. This is, this is where I'd have to probably surround Aragorn so he doesn't compel him away and just have him run off on his horse. 
Um, in fact, there's even an argument that I just start off by dismounting LSR um, just to prevent like some kind of crazy shenanigan with that. Because he can no, do triple I, compel. I think you just surround him with guys. And I could do that. My fear would be the triple compel. And maybe I miss one, but you're probably right. With a 40 mil base, just simply surrounding him probably just would keep him in place. Um, I still have to move forward as much as possible. But if I go first in a round, he can't cast spells unless he calls a heroic move. In which case, I call a heroic march for free, and I can move very close to him. So for anyone thinking, oh, I'll be standing in place the entire game, that's not actually true. He has to still make sure he moves first in order to stop Aragorn from moving the, the army forward. So I do think I'm going to make it to him. I do think he's going to cast a bunch of spells, but I'm not sure how harmful they'll be, especially if I'm surrounding my own guys. And uh, once combat hits, that's when, yeah, the King of the Dead, I think even the Men of the Dead, Men of the Dead wound your fell beast on three. So even they can take those things out pretty quickly if I get to. Uh, half of his army can be wounded by my Fountain Court Guard still fairly easily. I'm assuming he's going to have the Black uh, Numenorians in the front, uh, in which case... I, uh, Courage 4, I believe. Courage 5. Yes. yes. Oh, uh, four. Courage 5 with a bonus, no? Oh, no, no. Courage 4 with a bonus, actually. No, uh, actually. It is, it is Courage five, 5 with a bonus. Well, it's 5s either way. It's, yeah, 5s either way, yeah. So, um, the only important thing about that is if he starts at 3, it jumps to 4 with a bonus. It's actually 4s at a certain point. Um, <clears throat> so, and, you know, my numbers are similar to his, but the very, very key distinct advantage I think I can stress on is that even through hurls i can survive a lot of crap <laughs> that he's gonna throw at me um so uh needing sixes on straight on everything uh is very very helpful in my defense but yes do i think lsr is gonna do a lot more than just simply be a big distraction probably not unless i get like a really good heroic move while i'm in combat and then elkar jumps in my men of the dead wrap up his other fell beast and then great lsr can just use his ability to roll on fours and just cut through things. Um, I do have a banner effect despite not having a banner. So I even not only outfight most of his army in many cases, well, I don't have fight it. I guess I'm fighting on par, but I do have more dice to throw around. So LSR will eventually make it into combat is my biggest point. I think he, I can eventually get him there. It's just, it will take heroic move offs and I can, although I have less might than him, I have four points of might used conservatively if I'm only spending the free point of might and just allowing LSR to get thrown around otherwise by the spells um, while he's surrounded, I think I can out-might him over time. I believe he's sitting on six points of might. Right. And a lot of it he needs to use to, to move. So, um, so I, I, can, I think I can wear him down. So that's – initially you might see the three ring rays and feel like I feel super threatened by this, but I do think I have a, a solid chance. So go ahead, Nick. Go ahead. Right, so – First of all, I think that you've been putting a lot of emphasis on the hurls. I don't think I would actually be hurling very much uh, because uh, uh, your army is, is purely defense seven or eight. So the hurl doesn't really do very much. However, Felbys, Felbys do have strength six and five value five. So I think my main strategy here would be to somehow place a situation where let's say I lost priority and I'm able to charge with three Felbys into two warriors each. And as crazy as, my, as it may sound, I may even call three heroic combats, hope to win all three, and then just try to kill uh, two warriors each. Even, uh, 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 even if I didn't call uh, any heroic combats, um, I should be able to kill six warriors of the dead within a single combat, or, or six warriors, uh, or, or six uh, founding guard within a single, single combat. So I think that's my sort of main, main advantage here in that uh, I have the time, well, well, we, we sort of both have the time to move around, but because of this extra speed that Felbys have, and because of all the, all the transfixes that, uh, 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 which I can use to keep Argon away from combat for some time at least, I may be able to come into a situation where I can somehow engage and just wipe out, let's say, a quarter of your army before you're able to do very much. Um, other than that, like, I think generally you are fighting me because of the banner reroll. So, uh, yeah, plus, plus your, your Harbinger of Evil uh, brings me down to courage. Well, uh, I just checked. So, Black Indian are courage four normally. So, with the bonus, they're five. 
with Harbinger there are four, but if I don't get the bonus, there are three if, I'm not, if, if, if I don't outnumber you. So that will be quite important to always keep trying to outnumber you, otherwise you, um, the Black Numenorians will die very, very quickly. So I, think, I personally think it's, it's quite close, but obviously I think I'm winning. Uh, <laughs> I think we so, can both agree that terrain is like not coming into effect here. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. So that's why, that's why at the very beginning I was asking, should we just clarify the terrain? Because any other army that you have, <laughs> the terrain doesn't yeah, right. matter. <laughs> yeah, I'm like not doesn't. caring about it either. Yeah. <laughs> should we just like take it off? Just, yeah. just, just to make right. it clearer? <laughs> I, I think the only way the terrain might at all come into effect at all, and I, I really don't even think I'll ever do this, is if, like, for some reason I wanted to hide Aragorn, but I really don't see me doing that. Um, so, I'll yeah. Just, I'll just, I'll just we we probably just, like, take the, you. Yeah, <laughs> we, we would just take the, the terrain off, probably, in the beginning yeah. of the match. <laughs> Be like, hey, Judge, this terrain sucks. We're going to move. <laughs> all right. So, Matt, what is your thought? Who do you think would win this? So, I think based on based on the description of how they fight, I think Devin has an edge here, and I think, well, I, I so the way I would play this is I would have like two concentric rings around, and I think this may have been what Devin was thinking: two concentric rings around LSR. Um, with the men of the dead on the outside and the fountain court guard on the inside of those guys, probably with about one foot base width in between. And then you just put LSR in the middle. The king of the dead is somewhere on the outside with the six will. He's not really going to worry about spells coming at him. Um, and then you just kind of march this ball forward. And I wouldn't be taking the terrain off Devin. I'd be marching this ball in the narrow gaps between like those woods and the river where it's hard for him to surround you. Mm -hmm. um, oh, no, I, I don't ever, I would just so this a joke. Yeah. I would never actually take terrain off in a, yeah. an official tournament capacity. Even if the terrain was worthless, I, I wouldn't even move it. And, and I don't think it's worthless here. I think anything that prevents the, with the fell beast from flapping around, um, which I mean, they can't do that in the woods. I think it's useful to put a, a woods on the flank of your ball. So, and then, so, so Mick has some options here, right? He can spend a whole bunch of will. He doesn't have that much will. He's got 12 on the Shadow Lord. He's got 10 on each of the ring race. And, and it's, um, it's 14 and 10. I think it's 14. Oh, it was it 14, 14 on the Shadow Lord? Yeah. The Shadow Lord had 12. All right. Yeah. Maybe. All right. So, in any case, um, he doesn't have that much to spend. And, well, just out of curiosity, Mick. So, so assuming the ball comes towards you and LSR is in the middle, what are you spending your will on? Are you trying to do something to LSR? Are you black darting him? Um, well, or are you just coming in and attacking? There's a, there's a couple of options, but because of how small the numbers are, if let's say I get to move second, um, I could even go as far as to say I'm black darting just basic warriors and then charging with Felbies and trying to kill as many as I can before before the combat actually begins. So it's, I don't know, I, I might just like flip a coin and, and decide on the basis. <laughs> I mean, either way you do it, if you're doing the black dart bombardment, that's that's fairly costly in terms of will. It is, yeah. Um, and uh, if you're going into two men of the dead with two fountain court guards behind them and a banner reroll, I'm not sure you're going to win those fights. Um, and that's kind of the problem with, I think, the way you'd kind of describe the tactic going in and then trying to heroic combat, I'm guessing you're going to lose maybe half of those fights. Well, no, well, no that's the thing. Like, I might not necessarily be heroic combat because, because at the end of the day, he only has 20 models. So even, yeah. even if I spend all of my might on just winning each fight, just winning uh, each fight. Yeah, so let's say I only need a four plus to win on three dice. Uh, even if I was to burn all, uh, uh, through all that might, I'm probably killing two, uh, uh, two models at a time. So I'm likely to bring him down by these three. And the whole situation with, with will points uh, uh, being quite pricey, well, I'm not really expecting these, Felbis, these ring rays to stay, to, 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 to stay around very long. So if, if, it, if it's going to be the case of, let's say, spending three or four will points 
to cast a black dart because because the felt beast is gonna die next turn potentially, or the or, or the game is gonna end next turn, then why not? All right. So I think here's 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 my projection of what would happen in that circumstance is um, you would flap in, you would make your three attacks with the fell beast, you would not call heroic combats. Um, uh, and assuming that you've, you know, you haven't, I mean, you may have done something to LSR, but he's, he's still around either on foot or on a horse or something like that. Um, you're, you're going to kill some guys. Um, but I think the, the next turn you're going to end up in a heroic move off situation. If you lose that heroic move, you're probably going to lose all of your fell beasts. Um, well, I would I would have my warriors nearby, so like they're not they're not necessarily just getting swamped and surrounded. Like I wouldn't yeah. just be flying Felbies forward. I it, it, it's still a ball, right? It's all it, it's all still still sort of together, and then I, I don't know. I, right, so I, I'm, I think I'm going. Uh, my vote's with Devin on this one. I think because I think I think at the end of the day, I'm not sure you have the resources to crack his line and deal with the King of the Dead and uh, LSR. Okay. All right, Rainier, your, your decision now. We're gonna betray my country, or am I gonna shoot straight for it? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, you, well, you I, have I, a I, dual citizenship now, don't you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> it's a all, European all one, too. I'm very European, so. <laughs> Next Articon, I'm gonna play for the Dutch team. <laughs> Okay, so I, I, see, I see everything what Matt's saying, basically. So I see that Devin would, of course, ball together to not separate. But I also don't want to underestimate the mobility of the fell beast. I mean, to the death, you start 12 inches away from the board. And even with Heroic March, with Aragorn and the King of the Dead, I think Mick can po position the fell beast basically wherever he wants. And he can even spread out his forces. Like, we see these little gaps in the middle he could prep to surround uh the army of dead there or something or he i'd be honest if he spreads out i'd be probably happy about that <laughs> so yeah yeah but but like if you want to go chase him then he could just peel off the 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 random models that are peeling off because you, you know what i mean like if he spread out and you want to chase I, I don't. I don't know. I. I really don't want to under, underestimate the mobility of the fell beast. And I know. I get what Mick's saying with the rogue combats. He's not gonna like throw three of his fell beasts into like the big ball of doom and be like, "Let's fight." No, but like the mobility of him having the ability to be like, "Okay, I can spend three of their might this turn, and I can take out six of the 20, 20 men of the dead." Or I could focus solely on Aragorn, and even if I spend all my resources to take out Aragorn, I still have three flying fell beasts with like four in the tank, and they can go kamikaze, basically take out four or five army of the dead before they die. So it's very, very close because Devin's army would for sure beat Mix in a in a fight like that, but. I just, I'm big in the mobility aspect. So I'd have to go 52-48 towards Mick. All right, Tim. Once again, okay, he did it <laughs> you to are me. the deciding I'll, vote. You know what? <laughs> I'll, I'll, are we, we going to do Tim's vote or public's vote? Not, well, Tim, mm -hmm. we usually do Tim's vote. But actually, we, I mean, we could ask what the public would so say. What, 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 what we'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll give my opinion. And everybody listening, please leave in the comment section below who you think would win this uh, fight. And we'll mention that on the next episode. Um, so it, it was funny. When I heard Devin's list, I was like, oh, actually, this could be really good. I heard Mick's like, I'm like, oh, my God, that's got to win it, right? And then I heard each of you go back and forth about what I would do and what – and I, I have never flip-flopped so much in my life. To, <laughs> I, I must have gone back and forth with who I thought was going to win like six times because then I heard what Matt said. And then I, oh my, I, every, every like two minutes, I was like, oh wait, no, this person's going to win. Oh wait, no, no, that makes sense. This person, oh no, this person. I, I, this is really, really difficult for me because you both have the same kind of concept, which is, you know, Mick has three heroes. You have two heroes. You both have like a terror line with, um, I, I apologize. Is, do you get the minus one courage in the, um, the Legion? Yeah. Uh, the no. king of the, yeah. He, yeah, still he, gets the minus, still he still yeah. gets the minus one? Okay. He still so, does it, yeah. So you, so you have... 
<laughs> you, you get that kind of that same thing where, against my yeah, yeah he's right I, I get minus one against my bodyguard and uh courage six i mean yeah, i mean, I mean your, your, your courage six drops to courage five which is the same as an elf now and, and an elf will fail once in a while i don't know i meant i meant this uh does the king of King of Dead gives the one. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, that's true too. It's just Mick retorted and said, "But so does he." And I'm like, "Oh, right. <laughs> against my bodyguard, oh, yes, courage yes. six, I get minus one." <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, it was one of those things where I kept it kept coming down to one thing in my head, which was if Devin was able to get a heroic combat off, where let's say he okay. killed one fell beast. <laughs> can, I, with, can I say one? Thing? Yep. Sorry, just before you say, uh, the hurl is also one reason I went for Mick. Hurl, like, I, that's what I thought was going to happen. Was Mick would hurl, and then yeah, yeah. and all, then he would charge. He'd get maybe a couple all, kills because they're on the ground. There was, all, there, all, there was Devin, also Devin, drink courage. Devin, which, Devin which which you you and remember, in order for him to take advantage yeah. of me being on the ground, he has to move in before I move. Yeah. So that allows me to swarm and surround his characters. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind. The hurls, that's why I brought the hurls up so many times. And I agree with Mick. I think he wouldn't use the hurls very often. But what I wanted to do with, you know, my analysis was of saying the hurls I don't think would damage me very much. And uh, while I think it's a factor, I don't think. Like like he could compel compel a soldier of the dead and just Mm -hmm. hurl him at like Aragorn or hurl him at the king of the dead. Mm -hmm. And like, it's not so much that he's going to kill things on on that, but he's going to just negate them because he can use the magic to negate to stop the heroes but he can also use the hurls i don't know i don't know Devin. i feel bad i'm betraying you brother <laughs> <laughs> let me let tim make his own decision damn it <laughs> so, uh, just, just something something to keep in mind is this is actually one of those rare games where i think you'd see aragorn calling uh heroic resolves yeah this is probably a rare one in that sense because that i mean because yeah. that all of a sudden makes um you know, if Aragorn's in a position where he's not really going to get in anyway, mm-hmm. uh, that makes um, Mick's ability to kind of cast the spells really hard. He's really got to commit a bunch more will into that, even ju- even if it's just to draw out a normal guy in order to jump on him. But this is I, this is also one of those games where Drain Courage is extremely strong because I have just have so much will that I can just spend on one dice tr- Drain Courage on both. Argon and I think the King of the Dead is is not fearless, is he? He's so, not fearless, but he's courage six or seven, six or I think six. He, probably. He's got yeah, six well, will, and okay, he's got okay, six okay. will. He's pretty hard fair. to get through. Okay, so. fair. Fair, fair, fair. But <laughs> I can always drink courage, Argon. Devin's like, like, come on, like, why don't you drink courage, the King? You, you, you do that. <laughs> well, but I mean, yeah, um, no, I mean, I guess just for the sake of time, go ahead, Tim. What do you what do you think? Are you saying you're you flip flopping a lot. Definitely see the sides, both sides. Since Rainier went last time, I'm assuming you're going to flip from what Rainier said and uh, choose the winner. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, the last point I, I wanted to make was I kept saying to myself, if Devin was able to do some kind of situation where he got the king and Aragorn on one fell beast, if he then used a heroic combat and then moved that onto another fell beast and killed two fell beasts in one turn, I think that swings it. But yeah, well, I I have to go with Mick. I'm sorry. I I just three fell beasts at that many points, and you both have rigged. This, rigged I, I just I feel <laughs> I have to go Mick. Kevin, he oh, did me too. I know. Exactly yeah. how you feel. I was about to, I, I was going to ask. Like, I was thinking you're gonna say Devin, and I was gonna say, well, what if I took the Witch King instead of instead of the Ring Grave, and then you say, well, in that case, I'm gonna go with you. <laughs> You took oh, well, that, that would have lost King. I don't think. Yeah, I, 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 th- I think if you took Witch King, it definitely would have been one of those things where it's like, yeah, I have to go with with Mick. I, I think but, ever ever so slightly, I'd go with Mick on that one. But it'd be right. really really big to see on the. T- I demand game. a trial by a jury of my peers. <laughs> <laughs> um, as always, anybody listening, please let us know in the comments if you think we're wrong and you think Devin deserved to win. Um, also submit any ideas you'd like for us to talk about in future episodes and we look forward to hearing from you this next week. All right, everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.